What's up guys and welcome back uh, to the dungeon. Today I have another VRM uh, test for you. It seems that uh, my latest video of uh, this build raised some question about the VRM section of the MSI B450A M Pro Max and because uh, the VRM section is naked, there's no head sync and some of you are concerned about the thermos and if it's safe to overclock a CPU with this motherboard. So what I'm going to do is to test with the Ryzen 5 1600AF and then I will throw as well the big one, the 3950X to see how this board react. I'm gonna make this video quick so I will skip all the boring parts and I will leave you only the important details. So uh, as you can see here, I have placed a thermal probe since this motherboard doesn't have uh, a sensor and I have to do it manually, but this is a very precise uh, meter. I'm using it for extreme overclocking. So I have a digital probe inside here at this height, directly in contact with the VRM. And then here I, have, I can monitor the watts of the power output uh, at the outlet. So we can monitor the watt of the entire system, the temperature directly in the VRM, Plus, I'm going to use as well this uh, thermal camera so we can see exactly how the board uh, is reacting, if it's getting hot in all the boards, only there, but you will see. And as software, I'm going to use a Blender Benchmark so we can have 100% uh, of uh, core loads, plus uh, we have a time reference of the result. So we can monitor as well, we can compare the result I'm going to do later with other systems with a better VRM section to see if uh, we can boost uh, with this motherboard, the CPU at the same level as the other motherboard with the more expensive VRM section. All right, everything is ready. Let's start with the first test. It seems that uh, this is going to take forever. So I'm going to check with the thermal camera now since, uh, well, the temperature is very stable and it doesn't get hotter than this. So let's check. And we can move forward with the overclocked test and then the 3950X. Because as it is now, it's getting very boring. So we have around 68. Okay, so let's say 70, 70 degrees at uh, default and we have uh, more or less uh, 3600 megahertz at uh, 1.2 volts. Let's now overclock the CPU and do this test again. We have a uh, 64 on the probe, 65. 156 uh, watts at the outlet and 72 with the thermal camera so more than okay nice so this board can handle a uh, six core without any issue at all let's try with the 3950x and see if we can have the time the result in, in time that I had with the other boards uh, more capable than this. So we will measure the time that uh, the benchmark takes to complete. And we can see if uh, the VRM section is supporting the CPU well enough to achieve the same result. So if we have, uh, it should take like 25 minutes to complete the test, the full test. If we have like 30 or 35, it means that the VRM cannot supply the power and they are cutting the, the frequency of the CPU. If we have roughly 25 minutes, it means that uh, this board can fully support a uh, 16 core as advertised in the MSI website. Okay, uh, as you have seen, I changed the CPU with the Ryzen 9 3950X, uh, a 32 gigabyte kit of ballistic 3600C16, and uh, well, the AVGA CL240. So we have plenty of cooling for the CPU, uh, very fast RAM to do the benchmark. The same configuration that I did uh, in one of my previous videos where I tested the ASRock uh, Tai Chi and the Tomahawk Max. 
So now I'm going to enter into the BIOS and we set the XMP profile and we launch the test. Okay, so now it's very quick. Just advanced mode, OC, XMP enabled, save and exit. At this point, it's pretty clear that uh, this motherboard doesn't really support the CPU, since if you check uh, uh, this, this is the frequency of the CPU, that it goes uh, from almost 4 GHz to 500 MHz. And so the voltage as well drops a lot, and well, there's nothing much to say. The probe is now at 96, 97, 98, 100, well, is spiking and uh, if we check the thermal camera you will see that uh, the two phase that are for the sock are okay but these four three phases we are talking about 110 115 when they cool a bit down as you can see the temperature will go up and they shut uh, the frequency again. Okay, now let's see the final results in minutes and we will see how bad it performed. Okay, the benchmark is now finished and we are at uh, 37 minutes, 33 seconds. That is very slow because when I tested the CPU, even with the Tomahawk Max, uh, I was like 24 minutes and something, 25 minutes at default. I was even able to overclock it uh, with active cooling. But now we are talking about 37 minutes against 25, is a lot. And uh, to give you a perspective, as you can see here, we are uh, two minutes slower than the Ryzen 3900X. Uh, so we're talking about four core less, we are two minutes slower. So normally this CPU is placed uh, around here, as you can see here, 25 minutes. And now we are here, 37, slower than a much cheaper CPU. I have to admit that uh, this test was a bit unfair, since as you can see here, with the AO, we don't have uh, any airflow in the VRM socket. So what I'm going to do now is to use the AMD stock cooler, the Rate Prism, which is uh, a very nice one. And we are not uh, limiting the CPU, since the, the tempo was really okay with the AO, and this is a nice one. And in this, case we have uh, some airflow that uh, from the CPU will cool a bit uh, the VRM section. It seems that uh, even with uh, the prism cooler with some airflow going through the RM we are still uh, thermal throttling in the VRM section, so we see that uh, when the VRM section is stressed too much, they cut uh, the frequency of the CPU. And as before, we are going down to 500 megahertz. Uh, I think we gained a couple of minutes, let's see, but it's definitely not a solution that is going to work. So we are 35 minutes, so we basically we gained two minutes and we are still behind uh, uh, other CPU that are less expensive than this. But we may have another trick to use. What I'm going to do now is to limit the TDP or do like a manual OC but down clocking and limit uh, the thermal uh, throttling of the VRM by cutting down the volts and the frequency of the CPU. So at least we can have a stable frequency and complete the test uh, in a good way. To make it work, I had to limit the socket power to 115, which gave us more or less 85 watts on the CPU. If you didn't know, precision boost overdrive is not only to increase the limit, but to set a specific limit uh, in this area. You can do it here, creator mode or game mode, and set PPT. More or less is 35% more than the power you want on the CPU. With this limit set, I will be able to complete the test without going into thermal throttling. But let's see how it goes.
we are in the middle of the last uh, part of the benchmark so I'm going to check uh, with the thermal camera since the sensor is not uh, that accurate under the five okay we can say that uh, we are at 105 before was 115 so we are just slightly below the limit of the VRM section so now it's just about to finish the test and see uh, more or less at uh, 3.7 3.8 gigahertz the final result now the test is done and from the score here I see that there was a there was a good improvement we had a boost up to 4.6 and 50 megahertz so it's nice so we, we, we have maintained the single core performance and this is a good thing since the board was able to to boost up to 4.6 and we have an average we had an average uh, of uh, 3.7 gigahertz more or less with the all core uh, load let's see the result all right now we have 26 minutes and 58 so 27 minutes two minutes less than a high-end board which is fine uh, the only thing that I'm a bit disappointed is that in the MSI website you can see that uh, this CPU is uh, supported but to me something that works or can manually set to work is not fully supported but it's just a small thing they should have put like a footnote like limit the power to 85 watts but we are talking about a 60 dollar board that was able with a trick to handle a 16 core cpu which is more more than fine considering that the limit was around 85 watts i wouldn't put in this board a cpu more than the 3700x which is 65 watt tdp so i wouldn't risk with a 3800x 3900x i think it's just too much but hey, again, it's a budget board that for the use that is intended to, so uh, CPU that like six core, uh, low TDP, eight cores, is more than okay. And they, it did quite well. We had some issue with the bigger CPU, but the board didn't act uh, weird and I don't have any restart. So it just uh, lowered the, the frequency of the CPU. All right, this was quite interesting and uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about that as always if you need some advice uh, join my discord server so i can respond to you quickly and uh, like as always like the video if you like it subscribe for more and see you in the next one